she looked at me straight and she said, are you gay? At that time, I felt like time froze. Like, I knew it was going to get to that question. But when that question came, it was either you're going to say yes or no, and you're going to have to be ready for the reaction. I looked at the wall for like 30 seconds and it felt like 30 hours. And all that was going in my head was, am I ready for the reaction? Am I prepared to run away? Do I have the connections to do it? And all of that, I had to do it real quick. And I was like, what if I was? And the first thing, oh, we're going to send you back to Saudi Arabia. We don't have, a, excuse, a, a faggot in the house. We are going to send you to conversion therapy. We're going to get you married. They took away my phone, thinking that I would lose all my contacts. And after I've had, I have thousands of phone numbers saved up. So I, I always back it up. So... They gave me a new phone and I straight up called Scott Jones, the Dean of Human Life for the Student Life, and spoke with Breton, the head of the LGBT Center. And the next day I went to class with my mother. I was called by their office and they just called the teacher and the, the, the professor in, in the classroom and they asked me just to meet, to go to Dr. Jones' office. We got on the phone with my lawyers and the Kansas City Anti-Violence Project. We suspected very much that I was under the direct threat of being kidnapped. Dr. Scott Jones hosted me in his house for three days. There are people that came and knocked on his door at 12 a.m. while I was asleep and asked me to get out and he said he would call 911 and they left. After three days, I was driven to Kansas City and I was placed in a safe house. 